In this video, I'm going to teach you how to edit a professional looking video from start to finish in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is the same software they use to edit major Hollywood movies and Netflix shows, and I'm going to do it fast. I'm going to show you everything you need to know from getting your footage in, cutting it up, adding music, creating text that actually looks good, color grading that makes your footage look cinematic, and exporting a finished video that's ready to upload anywhere. No fluff, no filler, no hour-long tutorials that'll put you to sleep. This is just the essential steps that'll have you editing like a pro by the time the video ends. Let's get into it. So first things first, you need to download Adobe Premiere Pro. Now Adobe doesn't make this free like DaVinci Resolve, but they do offer a seven-day free trial. I'll put the links in the description. Once you've got it installed, we're going to open Premiere Pro and you'll see this start screen. We're going to click new project and give it a name. I'll always name mine after whatever I'm editing, so I'm gonna call this one Tutorial. Go ahead and click here to save your project to a folder where you can find it later. All professional editors will have a very specific folder structure to keep all of their project files and assets organized. Now, in just a couple minutes, I'm gonna show you why that's important, and I'm even gonna give you my pre-built folder structure for free. Now go ahead and click OK, and boom, we're in Premiere Pro. Now, at first glance, Premiere Pro looks really intimidating, but it's actually designed super logically. You've got four main areas, and once you understand these, you understand Premiere. On the bottom left, that's your project panel. This is where all your media lives. Your video, audio, photos, everything you import goes here. Think of this as your ingredient list when you're cooking. On the top left, you've got your source monitor. Now, when you double click a clip that's in your project panel, it'll show up here so you can preview it and then decide what parts you wanna use. On the top right, this is your program monitor. Now, this shows you what your final edit looks like as you build it. To the top right of that is the properties panel. This one will show you important information and let you quickly change some settings of anything you have selected. This will be your best friend, I promise. And the big area to the bottom, this is your timeline. That's where the magic happens. This is where you're actually gonna build your video by arranging clips in order, adding text and music. And finally, to the right of your timeline, you're gonna see the audio meters. Now, this lets you easily see how loud or soft the overall volume of your clips are. Now, the beauty of Premiere Pro is that Adobe designed these panels to work together seamlessly. So you're constantly gonna go between them but it becomes second nature really fast. You can rearrange this layout to suit however it is that you like to work by hovering over the edges, and then you can move them wherever you want. You can move any of the panels anywhere you want all around. Now, if you're messing around and your workspace gets messed up or looks different than mine, it's a super easy fix. Just go up here to Window, Workspaces, and then make sure you're in Editing, and then go all the way to the bottom and choose Reset Layout. And that'll reset everything to the standard layout. So let's go ahead and bring in some footage. Now, as with any great software, there's gonna be several ways to do everything. I think that's a little more complicated when you start, but as you learn, you're gonna find the way that works best for you. Right now, I just wanna show you two methods. Method one, come down to the project panel and choose import. Navigate to your footage and then select everything you wanna bring in. Whatever photos, videos, music, whatever. You can select multiple files at once by holding control or command on a Mac while clicking. I'm gonna actually go ahead and undo that by clicking command Z or control Z on a Windows. And now I wanna show you method two, and this is actually my personal preferred way of working. You can just open your finder or file explorer, navigate to your footage folder, and then you can literally just drag and drop files straight from your desktop into the project panel. It's super fast and intuitive. But here's pro tip number three, and this is the game changer that I mentioned. You should really create bins to organize your media before you start editing. So if you right click right here in the project panel and choose new bin, and then name it something like video clips. Make another one for music, do another one for photos, and then you can drag your imported media into the appropriate bins to keep things organized. Now, I know this seems like a lot of extra work, but trust me, on any edit longer than five minutes, this organization will save you hours of searching through files later. Professional editors will always do this. Now, I'm gonna quickly undo all of this again, and I'm gonna show you how a real pro does it. Every good editor will have all of these folders already prepared and organized on your hard drive. Now, if you'll notice in my finder, I have pre-made folders, and that's where I'm always gonna put all of the assets for every single video. It's always the same from project to project. And if you guys want this exact folder structure that I use on every professional job, I have a free download link in the description. So you can download that and you can customize it to fit your workflow. Now, when I drag this folder from my finder, you're gonna notice that in Premiere, it keeps that whole structure so that everything is always organized. That's gonna save you a ton of time. You can change the way your clips display by clicking between the list and thumbnail view down here. I find that list view is easier to organize clips 
clips and move things around. And thumbnail view is best when you're searching for footage. So once your footage is imported, go ahead and double click on any clip to preview it in the source monitor. That's the one up here on the top left. You can scrub through it. You can see what you've got, and then you can decide what part you want to use. So now the fun part, let's actually do some editing. Let's go ahead and drag your first clip from the project panel straight down to the timeline. You'll notice that it automatically creates a brand new sequence with video and audio tracks, and it's going to snap to the beginning. Now, this is actually a bit confusing because it names this new sequence a file name that you just imported. So if you aren't paying attention, you're not even going to know where to find it. The first thing you want to do is rename the sequence to something that makes sense. In the project panel, you're going to know that this is a sequence because of the different icon right here. Now you can see it better from the list view. Just double click on the name and I'm going to call this one tutorial. And then what I always do is right click and create a new bin or click on the little folder icon down on the bottom right of the project panel to do the same thing. And I'm going to call this sequences. Now, as you get better at editing, you're probably going to make a bunch of sequences like version one and version two, maybe a sequence of all your best shots and things like that. This is a really good place to keep them so you can find them easy. Now let's go ahead and go back to editing to play your timeline. Just go ahead and hit the space bar. Hit it again to stop. You can also click and drag this little blue playhead up here to scrub through your edit manually. Notice the window on the top right is going to show you all the footage in your timeline edit. You can also use the play button that's up here as well. And the same button will stop playback. If you want to zoom in and out of your timeline, you can use the little bar at the very bottom here by stretching either end of it. It's really intuitive and it's going to zoom to wherever your playhead is. You can also use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and make some cuts. And again, as with most things in Premiere, you've got multiple ways to approach this. You can use the razor tool, which is right here in the toolbar. You can either click it or you can press C to select it. And then you can click exactly where you want to slice your clips up just like that. Don't forget to always go back to the selection tool after you're done slicing your clips or you'll accidentally keep slicing when you try to select things. But you can always hit Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo any mistakes you've made. You can also position your playhead right wherever you want to cut and press Control K or Command K on a Mac and it'll slice through your clips the same way. I prefer the keyboard shortcut method because it's faster once you get used to it, but you guys feel free to use whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Now, whenever you're cutting clips, notice how when I make a cut, it automatically cuts both the video and audio together. That's because automatically they're linked. Now, if you want to cut just the video or just the audio without cutting the other, you can hold down Alt or Option on a Mac while cutting and it'll do just one. That also works for selecting with the selection tool as well. If you want to turn off linking altogether, you can just click this little icon right here. But if you do that, you really got to be careful when moving any talking head video because it's going to lose sync with the audio. Premiere is really smart though, and it gives you a little message on both clips that tells you how far out of sync they are. For the most part, I'll always leave this on and I'll use the Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac if I need to control them separately. To delete a section that you don't want, just select it with the selection tool and then you can hit delete or the backspace key. Now notice that it leaves a gap in the timeline where it was. Remember that everything is selectable. So you can literally select that empty space and delete that as well. But here's a better way. I'm going to undo all that. And there's a shortcut that will do all of that for you in one move. After you cut out a section you don't want, you can select it. But this time, press shift and delete. This is called a ripple delete and it automatically deletes the clip, selects the space, and then it moves everything else up to fill the gap in one go. So to move clips around, just click on them and drag them anywhere you want. You can even put a clip above another one on a new video track. To extend or shorten a clip, you can hover right over the edge until you see this little red bracket, and then you can drag in and drag out. The clip will extend as long as you have unused footage available. One thing to notice that I'm sure that you already did is that everything above this bar is video and anything below the bar is audio. Now you can make these bigger by hovering over the video or audio track and then expanding it. This is especially good for audio. Notice how I can see all of my audio waveforms and it's an easy way to see how loud it is. When I play a clip, I can see the decibel level over here on the right of the timeline. The goal is to have all of your levels staying between negative six and negative 12 decibels. You never want the line to get to the top. That'll clip your audio and it will sound Awful. So let's add some music. If you didn't already import audio into your project, you can always import it at any time you're ready. And you can do it the same way that we just imported video. Right click on the project panel and choose import. But since you're probably going to be adding music from the same folder as your other media, the fastest way is to just drag your music file straight from your desktop or finder directly into the project panel like I prefer doing. If you're making a video for YouTube, you want to make sure that you're using royalty free music. 
I use epidemic sound in Artlist and I've never had a problem. You never want to use popular songs because they may get muted or even taken down altogether. And something to note is that Adobe actually has a built-in music service and you can buy music directly from within the program. Head up to Window and select Essential Sound. It's actually pretty cool. I'm going to cover that another day. But you can basically just search for music here and then drag it into your project. Personally though, I don't use that. So I'm just going to go click on the little pancake looking icon and close that. Then I'm going to go over here and drag my music file that I already have over here to our audio track below the main footage. You're going to see the waveform appear in green. <laughs> the music is way too loud, so let's fix that. I'm going to drag the audio so it's a little bit bigger so I can see my waveforms and then look for the thin white line running through the audio clip. That's the volume level. You can drag that down until the music sits nicely under your voice. For background music, I'll usually go to about negative 20 or negative 25 decibels. If you want to fade the music in or out, you can look for the tiny white squares at the beginning and end of the audio clip. Just click and drag those to create super smooth fades. This makes everything sound way more professional. Now for text, you could easily just grab the type tool, that's the T in the toolbar over here, and then you can click and directly start typing on your footage. You can easily use the selection tool again to move your title anywhere you want it. And you have access over here on the right in the properties panel to change the font, the size, the color. You can totally do that and it's easy enough, but there's a much better way and it's easier if you use the graphics panel instead. So if you look to your left, you'll see a little tab over here that says graphics templates. Go ahead and click on that. And now you see a bunch of really awesome templates. These are professionally designed, some with animations, and they'll make your text look way better than just plain titles. So just scroll through, play with these, find one you like, and then drag it to a video track above your footage. Click on it to see its properties in the properties panel. You can change the text by double clicking here. Go ahead and type whatever you want. I'm gonna type tutorial. And then you can go ahead and change the font, the size, the color, everything you'd expect. Here's a pro tip for readable text. If you do create your own, you always wanna add a subtle drop shadow or a background. Even if your footage looks fine now, if you ever wanna use that title over different footage, the shadow will make sure it's always readable. Now you can totally create simple lower thirds for names, call out text for important points, but just remember, less is more. You don't wanna go crazy with animations and effects. Now let's add a transition between our clips. We're gonna head back to the project panel and you'll see a tab that says effects. When you click on that, you're gonna see a ton of presets, video effects, audio effects, and more. But we're gonna click on video transitions and now you can see there's a ton of transitions grouped by category. Make sure you go ahead and experiment with all these. For now, I'm gonna go into dissolve and use a basic cross dissolve. It's super easy to add the transition by dragging it right between the two clips and that's it. Now we have a nice dissolve from one clip to the next. So now it's time for the magic. Color grading. This is what separates amateur footage from professional looking content. So we're gonna use the color workspace for this. Go up here to Window, Workspaces, and choose Color. Now, select your video clip in the timeline and you're gonna see the Lumetri color panel up on the right. Now just ignore everything except for basic correction. I'm gonna just make my shadows a little darker and then maybe come up here and make the highlights a little bit brighter. And if your footage looks too blue or too orange, you can adjust the temperature slider till it looks a little more natural. Then just maybe add or remove saturation depending on how your clip looks. And that's it. You can toggle this effect on and off by clicking here so you can see how big of a difference that we made. That's pretty awesome for just a few clicks in a few seconds. And here's the secret sauce. If you want to get super fancy, you can go to this creative section and try some of these built-in LUTs. They're super cool. These are color grades created by professionals. Just go ahead and click through them and see what looks good with your footage. There's so many to play with. Once you find one that looks good, you can adjust the intensity right here and then fine tune it with any of the other controls for whatever suits your taste. The difference is incredible. This one step could make your footage look like it was shot for a movie. And now if you don't want any LUTs, again, you can just either disable it with this button here or you can use the drop down box that you just used, scroll to the top and just choose none. Now the final step, exporting your masterpiece. You can go up to file, export media if you wanna use the menus, or you can just click on the top left over here, export. But the fastest way is just to press Control M or Command M on a Mac. That's the keyboard shortcut that every professional editor will use. So now in the export dialog box, you can change the name of your video if you want it different than your sequence was named. Go ahead and choose a folder to save it to, and then you can choose any preset that you want. This will save you a ton of time. If you don't see one that you want, or if it seems a little too confusing, let's scroll all the way to the bottom and actually choose more presets. At first, this might seem way more confusing because there's so many more presets, but for most of you, just go ahead and type in YouTube. Then choose if you want it to be HD or 4K. Now I always shoot 4K and I always want to export to 4K, but most of you will probably just need HD 1080p. This will give you great quality with a reasonable file size. So once you select it, you can see that Premiere handles all of this technical stuff that we don't have to worry about. Just click OK, and then down at the bottom right, 
click on export. Depending on the length of the video and your computer speed, this will probably take a few minutes. And there you have it. You just learned professional video editing fast. You know the exact same workflow that editors use on major productions, just simplified for getting started. And the best part is everything that we just covered works whether you're editing YouTube videos, short films, client work, or anything else. These fundamentals scale up to any project. If this video helped you out, smash that subscribe button because I'm building the most practical filmmaking channel on YouTube. Now, don't forget to download my free folder structure from the link in the description and make sure you drop a comment and let me know if this helps you out and what you want to learn next. I read every comment and your suggestions literally decide what I make next. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.